Oh, no way, a text message. Who's it from? Oh, Markiplier, how sweet. And there's a picture? Oh, God, no. Oh, oh, it's burned into my retinas. Oh, I wish there was bleach for my brain. Internet. Welcome to Game Theory, where last time we learned that saying hello is a bad way to get someone to go on a date with you. Luckily, I'm not hitting on you. I just want to be friends. Maybe friends with benefits? And those benefits being... Subscribe to the channel! Thanks! Anyway, let's not waste any time and hop straight back into part two, covering my fifth most anticipated topic ever, can dating sims help you get a date in real life? If you missed the last part, feel up that eye icon in the upper right-hand corner. Don't worry, the video will be waiting for you when you come back. Now, when we last left left off, we had just introduced ourselves to the real-world person of our dreams. So now it's time to get down and dirty, learning the strategy that'll help us to get down and dirty. And now, we continue MatPat's Theorist Guide to Dating in Six Easy Steps, based on dating sims, today, by talking about talking. Step number three, speak in code. Dating sims give you a lot of leeway for talking to girls a lot of leeway. But in real life, us guys know that there are a million ways to botch an actual conversation. In both Honey Pop and Love Hina, you start off afraid to talk to girls. In the games, you either get some magical help from your spiritual love guide, or you just read the girl's diary when she's not looking. Because the first step to a successful relationship is breaking and entering. Warning, not actual step one for successful relationship. Anyway, in most of these games, if you're gonna win a kiss, or a tentacle-fueled hentai session at the end of the date, chances are you're gonna need to have asked the girl for basic information about her life, and then be able to recite it back to her when quizzed during the date. It's all about getting to know a girl, then remembering her preferences later. So do the winning answers in dating sims translate to winning answers in real life? As it turns out, yeah, absolutely. OkCupid okay, data shows that men have a 40% higher response rate when they mention specific details that are found in the women's profile, or ask her questions about her interests. What? Taking actual genuine interest in another human being makes them like you better? Unbelievable but true. So yeah, Ali, I find it absolutely fascinating you think you're a 5200-year-old alien who likes the band Muse and tarot bubble tea. Please go on. Or Donna, please go into gory detail about whatever serial murder you committed last night with your family and decided to send me pics of. I'd love to know what horrific things you have planned to do to my body tonight. But you know what? We can go even further by not just asking questions, but by asking coded questions. For instance, answer me this. Do you like the taste of beer? Seriously, do you? If you you answered yes to my question, you're more likely to have sex with me on the first date. Up to 60% more likely, in fact. No joke! That question is the single best predictor for finding out whether you're gonna sleep with me on night one. That said, I'd much rather take the time to learn about you as an individual, as a person. So stop trying to get in my pants! I'm more than just a piece of meat, okay? And my eyes are up here. But in all seriousness, this coded question is based on millions of data points sites like OkCupid and Match.com have collected over the years, making you into a relationship mind reader. Or maybe the girl you're trying to woo is just a half-naked, unemployed forest nymph who just told you she likes to have sex in public. That's probably an indicator about whether or not she's interested in you, too. Anyway, according to the statistics, you can find out really deep information about your date by asking questions that don't even seem like they matter. Want to know if you and your date will be compatible for a long-term relationship? Just ask the following three questions. Do you like horror movies? Have you ever traveled around another country alone, and wouldn't it be fun to leave everything and go live on a sailboat? They're stupid, they're random, and yeah, good luck working them naturally into a conversation, and yet, if you and your date agree on all three, your chances at a long-term relationship are actually four times higher. It's crazy! But okay, now that you're armed with the knowledge that you want to live on a sailboat watching Saw for the rest of your life, when do you ask her out and avoid the dreaded FRIEND ZONE? Step number four, timing is ev- 
is everything. Asking someone out is hard. Too early and you're the awkward creeper. Too late and you're the gay best friend. Dating sims actually do a really good job of portraying this. We talked last time about these heart and relationship meters that measure your propinquity with a person, and usually you can start asking them on dates around the one-third full mark. In Pico Sim Date, this is a couple of hearts. In Love Hina, you need to have had several conversations with a girl. And while you can ask girls out in Honey Pop whenever you want, you need to have talked enough to her to build up your stats in order to have that successful date. The rule of thumb is that when you've run through most of the general questions you can ask her and she's comfortable receiving calls, gifts, and emails from you, but not after so much time that you're painting each other's toenails, it's time to pounce. So is this true to life? Absolutely! According to virtual dating assistants, men who are dating online tend to ask for a meeting after 5.14 total emails, so usually in the second or third message that the man sends. However, this is too soon. The men who are most successful at arranging in-person dates are the ones who wait nearly 10 messages to be exchanged. Almost twice the number of messages they think they should wait. Guys, slow down. You gotta build up that relationship meter first. That said, on the other hand, there are also dangers to not asking for a date fast enough. eHarmony reports that if you've been in regular communication with someone for six weeks or more without discussing a date, well, sorry friend, you're out of luck. Your odds of a relationship decrease dramatically. And so what about having a... Uh, very successful date. The girls in Honey Pop will go back to your place for a roll in the hay at the end of your fourth successful date. So, do you wonder when the best time to bring up that very touchy, get it, touchy, subject with your IRL love interest? Global survey by Time Out showed that real people consider 3.53 to be the optimal number of dates before buzzing the old Brillo. So, just like in Honey Pop, you can bring up the horizontal hula during the fourth date and be statistically spot on. Now, if you're looking to score earlier, it's important to know that only 10% of people globally expect to roast the broomstick the first time out. And yes, that is a euphemism for sex. I looked it up. So unless they really like the taste of beer, you should never make the assumption that your partner is thinking in that direction. Even if you, and the tiny brain in your pants, are. And so that leaves us with a question. What are you gonna do while you're waiting for that elusive 3.53rd date to roll around? Dating sims have something to say about that, too. Step number five, give gifts, give life. In pretty much every dating sim, you use gift giving to win over your dates. In Love Hina, it's how you go from being good friends to the coveted close friend status. In Honey Pop, giving gifts increases the amount of honey you get from talking to them. Pico Sim Date Less Than 3 has it boosting your relationship score much faster than regular conversation. And when you're giving those gifts in the game, you can't just throw anything at her. Girls who really want a frying pan aren't gonna be jazzed when you give them a watermelon. Are these real gifts? What kind of girls are these? Seriously though, in Love Hina, you can give Shinobu like 30 frying pans. She just can't get enough. So the big question is whether gift giving is an important part of real world Mackin. And interestingly enough, there are two sides to this story. To get to the bottom of this, we need to look at why we even give gifts in romantic relationships in the first place. Gift giving is believed to be a primal evolutionary trait. In studies on chimpanzees and other primate species, males regularly exchange food for quite literally doing it like they do it on Discovery Channel. In articles talk about it, it's called primate prostitution, where even though males might hang out with lots of females casually, the only ones he's gonna be showing his little chimp are the ones he's already given gifts of fruit to. And while it might seem like these primate ladies ain't nothing but banana diggers, they're actually being pretty smart. By only sleeping with the gifty guy primates, they're selecting partners who are best at surviving, finding food, and most importantly, being generous with it. So taking it back to humans, when guys expect to get some action after paying for dinner, it's not just that they're being a jerk, they're evolution evolutionarily programmed to think that they're demonstrating a preferable sexual trait by being generous and showing that they can support their partner. Girls who are attracted to guys who buy them stuff might seem high maintenance, but actually they're just acting based on evolution. So does that make dating sims right? Should you chuck tons of pine cones at the object of your affection because of evolution? Well actually no. Outside of the obvious fact that no one needs five copies of the same magazine in the span of two minutes, the other side of the story is that nowadays overgivers lose in the long run. Overgivers, that's a real social psychology term, by the way. Overgivers tend to scare potential partners off. There are two reasons for this. First, an overgiver usually indicates someone with low self-value. The reason people tend to overgive is that they believe they have to bribe someone to care about them. What they end up creating are dependencies rather than relationships. Because in the long run, they attract people who take advantage of them, not people who appreciate their generosity. Also, giving early on in a relationship makes people feel overwhelmed. They feel indebted to the gift giver, not appreciated. 
initiative. That's why dating sims don't allow you to give gifts until you're at least heart level 2. You want your date to be excited by the watermelon you just gave them, not feeling like they have to pay back a loan. So if I can't just up my relationship score by piling her high with samurai swords, what can I do? Well, dating sims actually present a really good way around this issue, which is to promote experiential giving. In both Love Hina and Honey Pop, you receive more points with your love interest if you give the gift of an experience, or take her on a more exotic date. Hey, I'm not just taking her to the spa to get her into her bathing suit, there's a strategy behind it. And this is exactly the way it is in real life. Cornell did a comprehensive study of gift giving versus experience giving in 2014 that shows across the board, regardless of age, employment, race, gender, politics, everything, people prefer experiential gifts to material gifts. The biggest preference was found in students, people who love to learn and experience new things. So instead of buying your college girlfriend some jewelry, know that she's more likely to prefer an experience that has less to do with a price tag and more to do with the cool time that you spend together. And finally, what kind of experiences should you have in a long-term relationship? Let's see what dating sims have to say. Step number six, be Nathan Drake, not Duke Nukem. We've all heard the old saying that nice guys finish last, and to their credit, some dating sims reflect this fact in life. In Love Hina, the girls hint that they'd be really impressed if you beat someone in a fight. In Sim Girls, it's a normal part of the game, fighting through hovering street ruffians. Punch out, this is not. And in Pico Sim Date, you're frequently offered audacious options like squeeze butt and talk about sex. Now, while I don't recommend getting to know a girl by throwing a shoe at her, studies do show that there's something to this idea idea that girls are attracted to aggressive men. It's the result of an evolutionary concept called parental investment theory. Biologically, women choose a partner who is reactive impulsive, meaning they respond aggressively to outside threats and can pass on those genes to their offspring. But hold on before you get your swell on too much. Not that swell, bicep swell. Don't go getting all 50 shades of gray up in here, because if you want a girl to stick around, you're gonna want to mellow out pretty quickly. Women become less interested in aggressive and kinky activities in real relationships relationships over time. It's less than 10% by the age of 26. And dating site statistics around long-term relationships show that women respond best to men who are self-effacing. Using words like sorry and awkward increase a guy's chances of getting a response by 15% or more. If you need more proof, just look at Casper Lee's success on YouTube, or any of the other cute awkward British tubers. Heart, you guys! Much cute, much awk. And with that, we've pretty much exhausted everything a dating sim can do for you in the real world. Surprisingly, these games get a lot right, and I'm not the only one who thinks so. Sites like eFlirt have referenced these games and said that, quote, in the future, I see it as something you could learn when you're younger, so that as an adult, you understand relationship dynamics better end quote. The bottom line is this, real or virtual, dating is hard, but dating sims are actually equipping you with the skills you need to make your real world relationships better. Whether you're dating a pigeon, a five tentacled alien, or a haunted animatronic, God bless dating sims. But hey, that's just a theory, a game theory. Thanks for watching. And hey, if you're looking for more dating advice, there's plenty available on our sponsor, Audible.com. Everything from Let Him Chase You, Dating Advice for Women, to The Power of the Pussy. Yeah. Then there's I Kid You Not, How to Make a Man Fall in Love with You in Less Than a Month and Keep Him Infatuated with You. Jeez! This is a real thing! We men, even with the power of science and dating sims, we don't stand a chance, do we? But for all you guys out there, know the enemy. Listen to these books and learn the women folk secrets. And you can level up your social skills, and for free, with a 30-day free trial by going to audible.com slash matpad, or clicking the link in the description of this video. Or maybe you've given up on dating entirely and are resigned to living a life alone. Well, no worries to you either. Audible has over 180,000 books available to download and keep you company in your crippling loneliness. Audible has been a regular sponsor for us, this video included, and it's a service I highly recommend, whether or not you're interested in dating advice. For instance, I'm currently listening to The Walking Dead series series, which is really good. So in short, if you value reading but don't have time to sit down with a book, or just want a voice to keep you company, it's perfect for you. So support them, and in turn, support our ability to do more videos for you guys. So remember, that's audible.com slash matpat, audible.com slash m-a-t-p-a-t. -A -T. All joking aside though, if you do choose to be alone, good for you. That's, that's not a problem, I just made that joke for joking references.